In this video, I'm going to put to the test the abilities of DeepSeek R1 model and ChatGPT's recently published O3 mini reasoning model in creating a network route map with virtually no effort apart from just a few clicks here and there and compare their performance. Spoiler alert, there is a clear winner. Curious to know which one it is? Stick around to find out. Now in this exercise, I'm trying to get these AI models to generate the shortest walking paths from a specific starting address to a bunch of different addresses. And not only that, I'm asking them to plot these routes on a map. And uh, if you think about it, this is quite similar to what we've probably done at some point with the uh, Google Maps. Whenever you want to get from one place to another, you would just fire up Google Maps and enter the destination, tell it whether we intend to walk, cycle, take public transportation or just drive, and it would generate the route map for us like this. Now for this test, I'm not giving the models any coordinate information whatsoever. I'm just simply going to provide my starting address or basically landmark and a few destinations as well. Again, in terms of how they're commonly known. And I'm trying to compare the ability of ChatGPT's O3 mini model and DeepSeek's R1 model to figure things out, to see how much of a challenge it is for these models to generate what I'm looking for. All right, let's fire up ChatGPT and DeepSeek side by side. We'll go ahead and activate the reasoning models like this so that we can make sure that ChatGPT is utilizing its recently released O3 mini model and DeepSeek of course is using its R1 reasoning model. And my prompt is going to be, I want to find and plot the shortest walking routes between my starting point, well in this case happens to be Etihad Stadium in Manchester and the destinations. I have picked just three random destinations like the Manchester Cathedral, Colliers Village and Delamere Park, which are located in Manchester as well. And I'm asking to plot them on an interactive map using OpenStreetMap and NetworkX libraries. All right, I've gotten the prompt into the chat box and we'll just go ahead and run this simultaneously to see how it performs. And you can see how the reasoning model actually kicks in in both ChatGPT and in DeepSeek. So first thing first, both models actually managed to figure out that uh, because I provided the locations just as an address and not a complete one either, just the commonly known names, it's going to have to use a geocoding mechanism to obtain the latitude and longitude coordinates based on the given address. And then based on these locations, it's going to have an idea about what sort of a spatial extent we are going to deal with. And with that, it's going to download the network graph. I can see both models have recognized the need of getting that step done. And after that, it's going to find out the nearest node of the downloaded graph to my from and to destinations, which is basically what they're supposed to do. And then it's going to use volume to plot the routes in different colors. Hmm, I like both models actually being very specific and exclusively careful about even minor details like that, because that's what we would essentially like to see on our final map, different routes in different colors. And they're also actually deciding to add markers to each point as well. And again, I'm actually quite impressed that it managed to realize that even though I didn't exclusively mention that I want markers at my starting and uh, ending points, it did realize that it would be nice to actually have markers at those points to better understand the map. So overall, pretty cool. Following this thought process, you can see it generated the code like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to first of all, run this entire script uh, generated by ChatGPT or three model and see whether any interventions are required to get this up and running or not. So to run this kind of a script, you actually need some form of a Python environment. And if you don't really want to mess with any complicated uh, development environments, especially if you are not really a programmer, you can use something like uh, Google Collab, which is nothing but a simple uh, development environment provided by Google, especially for things like data science tasks, which you can simply fire up uh, without much of an effort by opening up your Google account and you can head over to your Google Drive. Just create an empty folder like this. And after that, I'm just going to right click over here and select Google Collab. And it's immediately going to open up what's known as a Jupyter Notebook environment like this, where you could simply copy and paste your code and try to run it. I'm just going to name this ChatGPT because I'm just going to use the code from ChatGPT right over here. And it's trying to import these three libraries, but I'm not really sure whether these three libraries come in Google Collab by default or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to install these three libraries first. 
you can actually borrow that line of code uh, from the DeepSeq output. And I'm not going to install this GeoPandas library because I don't really see the necessity of doing that. We only require these three libraries. So go ahead and paste that in this cell right over here. And after that, we can just simply hit Shift and Enter to run this. So it's just going to take a couple of seconds to install these three libraries. And then we can head back. I'm going to copy this, get over to this cell and just paste that entire thing. And after that, I'm just going to run this again by hitting Shift and Enter. And I'm just going to give it a couple of seconds. And it seems like we did hit a roadblock. It says that module OSMNX has no attribute called get nearest node. So if I try to see where exactly that particular call happens to be on this script, so it's right over here. So if I go through the script, uh, we have the starting address and the destinations, and it's using the geocoder to convert these addresses to latitude and longitude points. And then it's downloading the graph and we get stuck here because it cannot find get nearest node attribute. So we'll see what ChatGPT has to say about this error. All right, I just entered the error message right over here and it said that I'm likely encountering this error because this has been replaced by ox.distance.nearest nodes. And it says that I'm going to have to take these two lines and use it to probably replace these two over here. Let's just give it a go and see whether that rectifies the problem or whether it's going to run into any other issues. And we can see that we finally do have an output. And what I can immediately notice is just by looking at the markers, you can see that we have one particular marker in one color, which is in orange, and we have three different markers in the same color. So these three are definitely the destinations. And this seems to be my origin, which actually is the Etihad Stadium. And if I click on this marker, you can see that it actually tells me what this location is. And the same goes for the destinations as well. And it actually did manage to plot for me the shortest walking route like this, which is pretty decent. You can see that if you would follow along this red color line, we are going to have to travel along this main road. And then we jump over to this side, walk through a park, walk through this neighborhood right over here and carry on until we reach, well, the Delamere Park right at this spot. So the output actually seems spot on. And now it would be interesting to see how this compares to what DeepSeek managed to generate. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new collab environment like this. And let's name that as DeepSeek. And then we can go back, copy this line of code again, and install the three libraries. Well, if you actually look at it, it's not really installing all three. It just downloads this OSMNX library because the other two are already configured by default. And then I'm just going to blindly take the entire script and just paste it over here. And I'm just going to give it a run and see whether we are going to run into any issues or not. And look at that. I actually managed to generate the network map just in one go. It didn't run into any issues and it did color all the markers in black. If I click on these points, you can see that just like the other output, it also manages to display a pop-up like this to tell me what exactly I'm looking at. And even if you look at the routes, well, they're supposed to essentially be the same. So are we actually going to pick a winner here? Well, I'm going to have to give the slight edge here to DeepSeek. And I guess you guys would agree with me. However, the code generated by O3 Mini was not bad at all. It's just that I had to take an additional step to rectify a particular line of code because it was initially trying to use a functionality that was not really available, but it did manage to get it rectified as soon as I raised the issue right over here. Instead of using get nearest node, it was supposed to be using distance dot nearest nodes. And if I try to look at what the code generated by DeepSeek did, well, it actually managed to get that right in its first go. So I'm going to have to give the slight edge here to DeepSeek in terms of its ability to generate a network map flawlessly, just based on my simple prompt. And if you were to actually take this up a notch, if you're not really happy with using OpenStreetMap as the base map and would like to have more control over things like opacity or maybe even access to a number of different uh, base map options, all it's going to take is just a simple prompt like this and it's actually going to list out a bunch of different options. And it would be nice to have the capability to actually add multiple base maps with something called a layer control. So if I just take this part of the script, 
I'm not really going to take OpenStreetMap because we already have that by default. Add that uh, somewhere over here. And if I try to regenerate the map, now you can see that we actually get the option to switch between different base maps. If you click on this button right over here, we can switch back to the original OpenStreetMap like this. And uh, if you want to maybe have sort of a dark base map like this, you can use this Carter DB dark matter type base map. And you can of course control things like the opacity by by playing around with this value right over here all right with that uh, it's going to be a wrap let me know what you think about the entire process and whether it was fair enough to name deep as the winner of this mapping challenge